Welcome Pastor as he comes to bring the word. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what is your name and how did you get it. I'm going to give you two of the strangest verses in the Bible. They're strange because of where they're placed. And you know if there's something strange going on, I'm going to find out what it is. These two verses from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Now the thing that makes them so unusual is you've got three chapters, 139 verses of begats. Who begat who? How many was in the family? And after these two verses, then God, the Holy Spirit, captures your attention with two verses. Nobody knows why they're there. Nobody knows why they were put where they are. And these two verses are powerful. Books have been written. Sermons have been preached. But it seems like all of the sermons concentrate on the answered prayer and the prayer that this man prayed. I'm going to read you the verses in a minute. And they concentrate on the part that says, Increase or enlarge my coast. Make my boundaries bigger. And they turn this whole thing and mess it up. They miss the whole point of what God is saying. They try to turn it in to what is for me. But what's in it for me? How am I going to get blessed? What's God going to give me? What's He going to do for me? And it seems like that is the message of our day. People want to know what am I going to get out of it? What's in it for me? What's God going to do for me? I very few of them ask, what can I do for God? These two verses, verses 9 and 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother. Now listen to this. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him in sorrow. Verse 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. The strange thing is, we don't know anything about this guy. This is the only place he is mentioned in the Bible. This is it. That's all we know. And why was he put in this particular place? It doesn't say who his father was. It doesn't say who his mother was. It tells us absolutely nothing about him. Now, there was a city named Jabez. It's in First Chronicles, I think it's um, chapter 2, verse 55. It talks about a town named Jabez. We know nothing about this guy. Names don't mean much to us today. Just a way to identify someone. But when the Hebrews named a child, that name was described what that child was going to become. The Hebrew parents realized, it's my responsibility to shape your destiny. 
And that name is what you're going to become. That's what I'm going to shape you to be. This mother named her baby Jabez. Jabez means the bringer of sorrow. The troublemaker. And she said she named him that because she bore him in sorrow. Now knowing that mother, a Hebrew mother, knowing that name was going to mold his future and shape his destiny. And she said, I name you trouble. I name you sorrow. Now, what kind of mother would do that to a baby? She said, I bear you in sorrow. Doesn't say what the sorrow was. Maybe it was a hard birth. Maybe there was a serious tragedy in the family. Maybe her husband, if she had one. We don't even know who he was. We don't even know if she had a husband. But if she had a husband, maybe he had deserted her. But this mother's inability to handle her hurt, her pain, she gives her baby a name that focused on her pain. She gave him the name trouble. She gave him a name and a destiny to fulfill. She called him trouble. One who brings sorrow and trouble. She looked at that baby and she said, you're responsible for this pain. You're responsible for this sorrow. Now, that was a terrible lie. That baby was not responsible. That little life had done nothing wrong. But she gave him a name that he was going to become. This baby is going to accept that name as truth. And he grew up thinking, I'm nothing but trouble. Everywhere I go, I bring sorrow. Now, that was going to mold his life, but it was a lie. He based his life on a lie. My question is, and I, I, I just have weird questions, I guess. Can't answer most of them. Where was the father? Maybe he was dead. Maybe he had deserted her, deserted the family. Maybe he was a wimp. I don't know. When this sick woman said, I named this baby pain and sorrow, why didn't that Hebrew father step up and say, no, you're not. We're not going to put that. And that's not going to be his destiny. But maybe he was just a wimp. She said, we're going to name this baby pain and sorrow. He said, yes, dear. I have a real problem with men today who are just nothing but wimps. But, and I, you, know, you would be shocked at how many men tell me, I would love to come to the sheep shed, but my wife won't let me. What? Grow up and grow a set of something. <laughs> I better leave that alone. She named that baby... She gave him a destiny. And he grew up with a mother who was always blaming someone else 
for her problems. Especially this child. And this boy enters life crippled in his self-image. What kind of a person am I? All I do is bring sorrow and pain and suffering. How do you think he felt when the neighborhood kids come and said, Is trouble home? Can sorrow come out and play? That was his name. That's what Jabez means. Every time there was sorrow in the family, he felt responsible. It's my fault. I just bring sorrow and trouble. And this sad little boy, locked up in his own dark world, trapped like a fly in a spider's web. Now we name our kids today after a favorite family member or some name that we particularly like. And sometimes we just pick a name out of a book. And then, listen, then we do the same thing to our children that the Hebrews did. We name our kids and we were named by statements that are drummed into our head as children. Who named you? And what name did they give you? I don't answer this. Did you ever have some authority figure parent, someone you respected, teacher, some religious leader, that maybe it was the kids you grew up with named you by saying things that they had heard their parents say about you. May or may not have been true, but it stuck in your brain and you still remember it. Way too many parents spend way too much time screaming at their kids. You never do anything right. And they said it and said it till you accepted it. I never do anything right. You will never amount to anything. You're lazy. You're dumb. You're stupid. It's so negative. We name, listen, we name our children and other people name our children just like the Hebrews did. We shape their destiny by the things that we say and the things we do. We name them and give them a name and a destiny to live up to. The problem is, the Jews did it in a positive sense, and we oftentimes do it in a negative sense. We give them a responsibility to live up to. J.B.'s mother couldn't handle her hurt, and so she named her, her child after her inability to handle life. Parents do the same thing today. What happened in your family when things went wrong? Was it screaming, fighting, fussing, anger, rage? And you learned. That's how we handle things in this family. And so you grew up and your name became Rage. You were always angry about something. And you took that name. It stuck to you. When there was a problem, did mother go to her room, slam the door, and not talk to anybody? Well, mom's in one of her moods. 
now you carry the family name. Maybe your family name was welfare. Four generations and nobody ever thought about getting a job. Well, it's in my family. I can't let the family down. We're poor and we're proud of it. It's my destiny. That's what I'm supposed to do. And then this one. You're just like your father. But they said that over something negative. Something bad happens, your dad gets drunk. Nothing bad happens, he gets drunk anyway. So what do you do? What's your life? You get drunk. Whether there's a problem or no problem. That demon of alcohol gets you, grabs you, and it won't turn you loose. Hard to get loose from a habit. Now you know, I, I just tell you what in my heart, what bothers me. I, that's the only way I know how to preach to you. How many little girls have been molested by an authority figure. Maybe someone in the family. And they were told, you made me do it. It's your fault. You're bad. You made me molest you. If you were a good girl, your mother wouldn't be drinking all the time. It's your fault that your mother sits and cries all the time because you're bad. How sad. We're given a name sometimes because parents do not know how to handle life. They can't handle their own life. And sometimes we name ourselves. I'm a failure. I'm no good. Whatever name you have been given, behind it all is the devil himself. He is the father of all lies. He is the murderer of lives and of souls. Now, please understand, I'm not condemning parents because they raised you the best way they knew how. They only did what they thought was right. Sometimes in their hurt and in their pain, they said things that set the pattern of your life. Well, what can we do, Pastor? What are we supposed to do? We can say, Father, I forgive them. They did the best they knew how. They didn't know what they were doing. I forgive them. Father, you forgive them. Now let's get back to this J.B.'s. One day he heard some good news. I mean, that good news contradicted everything that his mother ever told him. It contradicted everything he had accepted in his life and, and his destiny. The news shattered everything he had been brought up to believe. And verse 10 says, he heard about the God of Israel. Now wait. He was a Hebrew. But he didn't know anything about this God. And one day he heard about God who made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he would bless his people. And suddenly, J.B.'s realized, wait a minute. I am his people. 
God did that for me. God loves me. He promised to bless me. God didn't put this curse on me. My mother did. My family did. My friends did. He said he heard about the God of Israel. Now it's not talking about the nation of Israel. It's talking about the man Israel who was Jacob. Jacob. God had changed his name a night of wrestling. It says there was a wrestling with the angel of the Lord. It calls him the angel of the Lord. I personally believe it was Jesus. I don't believe it was the angel of the Lord. It was a messenger. But he had a wrestling match and wrestled all night. When daylight came, whoever this creature was said, let me go. And Jacob the deceiver, the liar, the cheat, that's what Jacob means. He cheated his brother out of his birthright. He lied, he cheated all his uncle. He, he just was a liar, a cheat, a deceiver. And he said, I'll not let you go unless you bless me. And this creature said, I'll bless you from this day on. Your name is no longer Jacob. Now it's Israel. The blessing of God. From this day on, you will have favor with God and with man. Israel. He heard about how God had changed Jacob from what he was to what he was going to be. So Jabez heard about this God. And he said, God can change me. Faith was awakened in him. And he realized, God has not willed me to be the way that I am. For the first time in his life, he really heard the truth. And he responded to that truth. When I ask people to come and accept Jesus Christ, that's not just so you can go to heaven when you die. I get so sick of that kind of attitude. Get saved so you can go to heaven when you die. That's the end result. And I want you to go to heaven. But when I ask you to come and accept Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to come so He can bless and change your life. That's what salvation is all about. We hear so much... We hear so much today about pie in the sky and the sweet by and by. But salvation is how to live in the rotten here and now. He can change your life. He doesn't intend you to be cursed. Now, we try to make sense out of life. The older we get, we try to look back and make some sense out of our lives. But sometimes our lives are filled with so many lies. You can't think your way out of it. You can't philosophize your way out of it. And you can run to every counselor on the planet and they can't counsel you out of it. So what do you do? You can call on the God of Israel. He can change you. That's what salvation is all about. You are not responsible for your parents' failure. And this, this gets passed on from generation to generation. You're just like your father. He was an alcoholic, so you become an alcoholic. What do they name you? Do they name you drug addict? Do they name you anger? Are you always angry with someone? What's your name? It's got to stop, church. Somebody's got to break the chain. Somebody's got to say, I'm calling on God. It stops here. 
My parents did it. My grandparents did it. But I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to call on the God who can change my life. We don't have to carry on family traditions. I forgive my parents, God. They didn't know what they were doing. I reject all of the lies that fill my life. I have a new destiny. I'm going to follow Jesus. Verse 10 said he heard about the God of Jacob. And he knew how God had changed Jacob's name to Israel. God did not change Jabez's name like he did Jacob's. He lived and died Jabez. But something changed on the inside of him. He was no longer a curse bringer. He was a blessing bringer. He was no longer trouble. He was one who blessed those who were around him. He called on the God of Israel. And listen, he was more honorable than his brethren. When you come to Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things become new. He calls you then by a new name. And that new name is now your new destiny. Well, Mac, what does he call me? He calls you one who can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He calls you overcomer. He calls you not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. He calls you peace that passeth all understanding. He gives you those names. He calls you the sheep of His pasture. All you have to do is follow Him and He will lead you to green pastures and still water. That's good. Yeah, give Him a hand. You may have been brought up to think that you were a bringer of trouble. That you had a curse on your life. You're now a curse breaker. And a blessing bringer. That's who you are. You're a child of God, church. That's shouting ground. That's this flat shouting ground. You are not responsible to carry on what you inherited from the past. You are not responsible to carry on the name that you have been given down through the years. Name that's pounded into your head. It stops here. By the blood of Jesus Christ.